Hi, my name is Abby Stein. I grew up in Williamsburg in Brooklyn, New York. I was raised as my parents' first son. I'm, I'm currently an author and an activist, and I live in Manhattan. Oh, so people might recognize me, just saying. I hope they do. Pacific, huh? I hope they do. Why? I don't know. It seems exciting. I grew up being told that I was a boy. Um, ironically, I say I never struggled with my gender identity because I always knew that I wasn't and it was so clear to me since I was three years old and as I write in the book, um, when I was four, I took quite a few actions in trying to talk to people about it, but in the Hasidic community, as part of being so sheltered, no one talks about it. I didn't even know the term transgender until I was 20. I didn't know there were other people who felt like me out there. And they weren't even homophobic, it's kind of ironic. I, I sometimes wish that my teachers or my parents growing up would have been homophobic or transphobic openly because it would have meant that I knew about it, that I would have known that they are trans people, that I would have known that they are gay people, um, but I didn't know anything about it. Then when I was around 12, I remember very consciously telling myself that, listen, I don't know what's going on here, but the same people that are telling me that I am a boy, which I know for a fact, I never doubted that for a second, I know that is wrong, are the same people that are telling me everything about God, about Judaism, how to live life, how to live a Hasidic life, that is the only true way, and so on. But what makes, if they can be wrong about something so existential about my gender identity, about who I am, why would I trust them for anything else? And that kind of started leading me down a path of questioning more and more. <laughs> How's it going? How's it going, if I want? Got it? Do you see yeah, where this is I, going? I <laughs> but also, He's already a nice one, yeah. an open-minded one. <laughs> yes, yeah. but that's not what he meant. <laughs> um, I've gotten to a point where my Judaism is very much I pick and choose, cherry pick, and I'm proud of it. The beauty of American Judaism, of New York Judaism, is my ability to do that, and ability for everyone to, whatever, whichever part you feel speaks to you, you can go and do, and not do the other parts, because I'm not stupid. Judaism has a lot of outdated stuff, like every other culture. Um, I showed my dad a quote from a Hasidic Rebbe from the, from the 18th century, who was one of our ancestors, that literally says, that for the reasons of reincarnation, sometimes uh, the soul of a female ends up in the body of a male. And to some extent that pushed my dad a bit in a corner and he admitted as far as going as yes, it's possible. He was like, yes, it's possible for someone to be trans. But then he's like, you need to have a holy person who has a holy spirit, which is a Hasidic version of knows what God wants. And he has to be able to tell you that you're trans, otherwise you can't know. And then his final reaction was, I'm not going to be able to talk to you ever again. I, if I know the combination like to my parents, am I breaking in? No. And I'm probably I'm not actually going to go in. I want to see if they change the combination lock or not. <laughs> Let's see. See if I still remember it. <laughs> I do. <laughs> if I can imagine a wormhole right now that is taking me to the same place 15 years ago or like 20 years ago, I would walk up to my small self that is probably playing somewhere here in the park and I would tell my old self, you're not alone. There are the people like you. You're not crazy. There's a whole world out there that will unconditionally accept you and love you. Um, and you do have a future, even if you think you don't.